Electricity is the uh, flow of electrons. It's the invisible force that actually powers our wallet. From our homes to businesses to uh, transportation and communication networks, it is so accessible that we barely even think about it. Until we have to recharge. My name is Meher al Qadi. I am a professional researcher at the Department of Chemistry and Biochemistry at UCLA, and I'm also an inventor trying to work on developing the next generation battery technology. If you want to improve a technology, the first step is to understand how the current generation works. The most popular rechargeable battery today is the lithium-ion battery. It's in your consumer electronics, in electric cars, in electric grid. A lithium-ion battery has three main components. You've got the electrode, you've got the electrolyte, and the separator. The electrode is the main component of the battery. This is where charge storage happens. You've got two main electrodes. We're talking about the anode and the cathode. The anode is the negatively charged electrode, and the cathode is the positively charged electrode. So the anode will release electron during battery operation and the cathode will be accepting electrons. The separator is basically a porous membrane that separates out the anode from the cathode while allowing ions to pass through. The chemistry of batteries is a little bit like bowling. Basically, as soon as you hook up a cell phone to your battery, the anode is releasing electrons that transport through the external circuit, giving some power to your phone until they are regained by the other side of the battery, which is the cathode. And in the meantime, you've got lithium ions that are moving through the electrolyte to the other side of the battery, so moving from the anode going to the cathode. Keep doing this until all the electrons have moved from one side, from the anode to the cathode. And now, to recharge the battery, you just have to apply some power to reverse this process. Lithium-ion batteries are an amazing technology, but they also have some disadvantages. Lithium is rare, meaning that it can actually get expensive over time. Also, the lithium-ion batteries have got environmental impact during mining and during disposal. But more importantly, lithium-ion batteries can be a fire hazard. If the separator fails, it will lead to short circuit. The electrons will flow under no control from the anode to the cathode, and that causes the battery to heat up very quickly and eventually catch fire. It just takes a fraction of a second for all these chemical events to happen. We call this process thermal runaway. My team is using chemistry to design a better battery. We are designing new materials, new electrodes, new battery designs to improve the efficiency of charge and discharge and stabilizing the anode during the battery operation. One chemistry that pops up as the most promising is the chemistry of zinc. The first advantage that zinc has over lithium is that zinc ions can release two electrons during battery operation, meaning that it has the potential to store more charge. So the second advantage that zinc has over lithium is that it's about 100 times more abundant, meaning that zinc ion batteries can be a lot cheaper. Unlike lithium ion batteries that utilize toxic solvents that are flammable, zinc ion batteries just utilize water. 
The fourth advantage of zinc ion batteries is that it has lower environmental impact. So you use less water, you use less energy, and produce less toxic chemicals. It's more environmentally friendly. Batteries are becoming more and more important nowadays. The United States, as of now, has low manufacturing capacity for lithium ion batteries. We may have sufficient lithium to get us through to the year 2050, but then may not be sufficient lithium to basically power the electric grid. It's very important for us to actually look for alternatives. Chemistry can help us get there. Will we ever have a perfect battery? It remains an open question, and it really depends on the definition. If you're just looking towards the ability to store more charge, you might be able to make that, but that comes at the cost of being more expensive. If you're talking or describing an ideal battery as, as, as something that can actually store more charge, that is environmentally friendly, that is cheap to make, it's difficult to actually combine all these attributes in one battery. Would I see how my research actually can impact people's lives? That makes me very satisfied. In batteries, there is always some type of chemical reactions that are happening. It's the chemists that can actually understand that and perfect those reactions, developing new materials that can make a better battery for the future.